We're live. Am I going? We are. I think we're live right now. Yeah, we're live. And you know what? Ladies and gentlemen, tonight hey, is Tim. Desmos. How are you? Good to see you again. I'm good. How are you? Good to see you too. I'm, I'm, hey, who do we have with us tonight? Fun. Yeah, we have uh, tonight. We have Nick Corley and Kathy Henderson, and uh, we have Desmos in the house. This is going to be a fun session. Um, welcome everybody to another. Uh, the this is part four of a four part series of help. I'm teaching math. Um, so uh, basically, not that we're implying that you need help teaching math, but basically. In this nation right now, we have a severe shortage of math teachers. People are getting asked to teach math who have never done so before in their life, and they're freaking out. Um, so if that's you and you're here, you're in the right place. We have your back. We're, we're going to get you equipped. But if you, you may be a student teacher who just finished, and now you're starting off in the fall here, congratulations. If that's you, you're in the right place. You know, Desmos is an awesome tool to have. It makes learning math fun. The, the mission of Desmos is simply two things, to get students to love math and love learning math. And Desmos does a great job with that. But even if you're a veteran teacher for 30 plus years and you know your colleagues using Desmos and you've always wanted to learn but have never had the time, tonight is uh, the session for you. So my name is Tim Brzezinski. I'm honored to be here along with Deidre Baker from the Iowa Council of Teachers of Mathematics who is sponsoring this free event. Um, before we introduce Nick and Kathy, Deidre, do you have any words from ICTM or should we get going? Uh, I ICTM was super excited to sponsor this, and uh, if you haven't had a chance to watch the Graspable Math, the Mathagon, or the GeoGebra YouTubes, you should definitely go back and do that, and all of those links will be posted on our website next week uh, to the YouTube channels to watch those replays. So, yeah, let's meet and get going. Definitely. So without any further ado, uh, honored to present Kathy Henderson and Nick Corley. So if you guys need anything, just shout. I'll be here. But otherwise, we'll, we'll answer the comments. We'll throw questions in. Feel free to, by the way, if you're watching, feel free to type in on YouTube or Facebook where you're from, what you teach. We would love to hear from you. Um, so let them know and uh, let's get this party started. So it's all you guys. Why don't you go there introduce you go. yourself first, Kathy? Oh, thank you so much. First off, I just want to thank you all for joining us tonight. I know this time of year can be quite hectic. Um, and I just appreciate that you are spending your time here to learn something in the evening or at night, depending on where you are in the US. My name is Kathy Henderson. I am currently a sixth and seventh grade math teacher um, in uh, Berkeley, California, uh, which is just east of San Francisco. Um, I am a certified Desmos presenter and a Desmos fellow. Um, I have been using Desmos in my classroom for almost eight years, and uh, it has changed the way that I teach. I love it. It's 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 wonderful. Nick, to you. Thanks, Kathy. I am uh, Nick Corley. I am a eighth grade slash algebra one teacher from uh, New Jersey. So we got both coasts represented and probably everywhere in between with all those uh, similar to Kathy. I am a Desmos fellow, a Desmos certified presenter, and... Uh, basically a lover of ed tech tools in general to energize the math class from uh, the other tech tools that were shown on the episodes before this are ones I also use in our classroom. So just up here, Kathy and I are pretty active on Twitter. So there's our Twitter accounts right there, but we also have our email accounts if you have follow-up questions in the next couple of days. So let's discuss our plan for tonight. So here is today's agenda. We're going to start off with a couple of uh, reasons why Kathy and I and uh, so many others use Desmos in the math classroom. We're going to hop into an activity where uh, the participants will be the students and I'll be the teacher and we will break down and talk about the idea of what teacher moves and the control center and the dashboard uh, when you're in a Desmos activity. Uh, we're going to debrief that ex experience, talk about what we like, what uh, where we can you know, make things exciting in the classroom. We'll do a tour of teacher.desmos.com. We're going to do some building and editing of custom activities, and we'll save some time at the end for questions. And just to reiterate what some other people said, if there's stuff you like, shout it out in the chat. Keep that chat going so we can learn as a community. Like in the math classroom, math teachers need to support one another and make a, a community of learning together. So here are some reasons if you ask me why I use Desmos in the uh, the classroom. The dashboard quickly gives me the ability to look at the insight of my students' thinking. Uh, the facilitation tools that I will model tonight keep students on task and help with classroom management. The snapshot tool, which is an extremely powerful tool, helps amplify students' thinking and compare student ideas. If you've heard about the five practices of uh, basically creating math room 
math classroom conversations set up by NCTM. That tool is really powerful to help achieve that. Um, the pre-made lessons make lesson planning super easy, and there's an ability to create your own free custom activities or edits. So a lot of great reasons about why I use Desmos. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to hop into a Desmos activity. So you've got two ways right now to hop into this activity. You can type in student.desmos.com and it will ask for a code. The code is up there or Tim should be dropping a link into the chat right now for you to hop into the Desmos activity tonight as a student and I will be the teacher and we'll go through an activity together. So this is gonna be about a half hour long. We're actually gonna go through one full lesson Then I'm gonna kick it over to Kathy for some like fun, exciting screens that aren't necessarily a whole lesson, but show some of the interactivity of Desmos. See you in the activity. And I see people hopping in. Welcome, welcome. You can work on the first screen. The first screen is a check-in screen. Feel free to check in there. This is the screen that you should be seeing right now. It says drag the point to show how you're feeling today. So you notice right at the origin here is a draggable point. So you can drag it right, left, up, down to tell me how you're feeling tonight. Then you can give me a little bit of a blurb about how you're feeling right now. Give everybody a minute or two to do that. If you are signing in, if you sign in with an email, you will be able to go back into this activity at a later time. If you don't sign in with an email, you lose the ability to go back into this at a later time. Once again, I'm just giving everybody a minute or two to sign into the activity and respond to the first question. So if I had to respond to this uh, first question right now, I would definitely say I'm leaning towards positive. I'm getting to work with some amazing math teachers and teachers in general tonight. I want to say I'm tired because it's nine o'clock. It's basically around my bedtime normally, but I'm going to go energetic because uh, getting to work with other people makes me pretty excited about what's going on here. So right now, if you sort of hop out and look at the stream yard to see what's going on here. I'm going to show you what the main view is of the teacher dashboard. So this is like your command center when you're running a digital activity in Desmos. And I have a couple buttons turned on already. So the first thing I have on the left hand side is the anonymize button. You probably see on your screen on the top of your screen, there's a name that is not your name. If I click that off, you can see your own name right now. But if I click the anonymize back on, okay, you'll see that you're assigned a famous mathematician or scientist name. The point to that button is to make uh, the math classroom a safe place for learning in the classroom. You'll also notice that like you're stuck on screen one. You can't get past screen one. You'll see there's an orange box around uh, the first screen on my teacher view. That's basically saying, hey, your students cannot go past screen one right now. We'll talk about the pausing tool in a little bit. On the upper right-hand side are some views, like what I can see uh, from this. So right now I'm in student view. I basically get to interact with this slide like I'm a student. So next thing I'm going to do is hop over to teacher view on the upper right to get a little bit of a different perspective. So now I get to see all my students' uh, responses. Okay, so I get to see how some people drug it. It says it's been a long day, so, so I'm not so energetic. I appreciate the honesty from New Hampshire, another East Coaster, okay, starting to teach proofs and taught literal equations today. Hey, literal equations, if you didn't use graspable math for that, definitely think about it. Feeling good, awesome, working so many things, but I'm tired. Yeah, I'm tired too. Uh, awesome, thank you for all your feedback. On the left-hand side is the individual responses where people drug their dot. But here's a cool thing. One of the great features 
of that left hand side as you interact it is a graph is i can pull everybody's responses together on one big graph using the overlay feature so now i get to see all of my students responses on this so i can see mostly everybody there's one lingering over here but everybody's pretty positive and some of us are lingering between energetic and tired and that's all good wherever you are so that was just the first screen it's a check-in screen uh just to see what we're doing i'm gonna hop everybody to the next screen so you'll see underneath this orange box there's a there's a left and a right arrow i'm gonna hop everybody to screen two so i'm just going to click on that right arrow the box will hop to screen two you'll slowly see all my students migrate from screen one to screen two and i will hop into student view to debrief what basically is the idea here so this activity that i'm going to be running is what's called pool borders problem it's a, actually a really old problem that we're going to get to explore mathematically i chose this because there's a lot of entry points from anywhere in the middle school level to the high school level so your job is to buy the right amount of tiles or borders that's these oranges or peachish tiles to go around a pool that's we're basically setting the tone of the problem we're going to be interacting and understanding the uh what we're doing today using these tiles nothing to interact with or respond to on that screen i'm going to show you a little bit of a different way to pacing because the next sort of two screens go together so i'm going to stop the pacing on screen two and now i'm going to hit that pacing button on the upper left and i'm going to say hey bring everybody to screens th three that's where i'm going to stop and four and restrict there and now you can see there's an orange box around screens three and four so my students have to uh basically stay on those two screens all right so i'm not going to say much here's a problem that's presented to my students a lot of the desmos activities are problem-based learning you can see the directions are on here okay so we have a pool presented to us it says without counting them one by one how many orange tiles uh should you buy for the border of the new ends three by three pool now the great thing about this left hand side is this is what's called a sketch tool so you can draw stuff you can draw lines you can write text that says stuff like pool there's a lot of uh tools to interact with over here this button allows you to do math so you can put fractions like two-thirds in there's an eraser and all this stuff so what i want you to do is i want you to try to use that sketch tool to help you explain without counting them one by one how many tiles you would need to go around this three by three pool okay and there's a similar question on screen four so please i'll give you a couple minutes to do things on screens three and four then i'll get to show you some of the cool stuff the teachers can do while you do that go Seems like some people are finishing up screen three. When you're on screen three, hit that arrow button at the top to go onto screen four. I'll give you another minute or two to do so. If you see something that you like about these two screens, please drop that in the chat and talk about it. And once again, another minute or two, we will look at these screens from a teacher's perspective to see what cool things uh, we can see from our students thinking. Give me about one more 
minute to keep working on screens three and four. Then we'll hop into teacher view. In about 30 seconds, I'm going to ask for everybody's attention. Fifteen. Ten. Five, four, three, two, and one. And I'm going to use another one of the tools available to teachers up there, which is the pause button. So in the upper left-hand side of the teacher dashboard are basically my control center about uh, controlling my students and their names and the pacing. And you can see right now, I have initiated the pause button and your screen goes grayed out and you can't uh, interact with it anymore. And it's a nice little way in the classroom to get all your students' attention. My students get in the habit of when I hit that pause button, usually you'll hear an audible moan, they'll start complaining, but that's my little way of saying, hey, I need everybody's attention. So once again, I go like this, you can interact with the screen. I hit that bot, that pause button and it grays you out. So now I'm in the teacher view of this screen. And what I get to see is the student responses. And you can see some amazing ideas and amazing thought process. And that sketch tool really gave me some cool insight about what's going on here. I'm gonna click on this student's responses. I just clicked on their graph there. Okay, and I'm getting some insight in this student thinking. You can see that, hey, this student saw these threes and there was four of them, so there's four threes. And they also saw the one, two, three, four corners. So the sketch and the little bit of the response here sort of go together and really give you some insight into the power that the student is thinking about. Let's look for some other unique uh, responses here. Ooh, this one's good. I like this one here. So still once again with that answer of 16, but thinking in a different way, this person saw our left and our right three, but then they saw the five across the top here. It's a different way of thinking that still gets us to the right answer. So one of the things I try to concentrate on a math teacher in the classroom is that not we all don't have to do this, uh, use the same approach to get to the same answer. Try to embrace the multiple different ways of representing the same answer. So there's some amazing responses to that screen. A lot of you got an answer of 16, which is awesome and amazing. One of the things I wanna show you when you use one of the Desmos activities that are free and built into their site is on the bottom left here, there's a couple tabs. One of them is sample responses. And it actually tells you what the answer should be, which is 16, which is a nice little tool. We'll show you where that uh, can also be seen on the activity page. And then it gives you some teacher moves, some things to think about if you were uh, running the lesson. And it says highlight unique answers for the class. And that's the thing. We want to talk about answers that are right, wrong, and just get ways of uh, amplifying student thinking. As I hop to screen four, once again, in the teacher view, I can see... Uh, a bunch of different type of responses that are all the same way. I also want to point out that these screens three and four, um, you know, for our struggling learners that sometimes have a tough time jumping into an activity, I think almost all of our students could uh, jump into the activity. I also noticed that my co-host Kathy has been leaving some responses for some of your students. So what I can see here is see this response right here. Let me zoom in on a little bit. See how there's a green box on that? OK, that green box means Kathy left a little feedback for the student. That feedback is up here. And she said, what a great solution. So if you are uh, Miriam Copine, there should be a box that sort of looks like a text message box on the top of your screen. And if you click on that, you should see that feedback. So let me model how I, I as a teacher can also leave that type of feedback. Uh, Kathy's done a great job and hit up a lot of people. So let me hop on this one here. And I can, once again, see some insight into the student thinking they have an equation, they have some things. And here's the move right here is if I want to leave student feedback, I go to this uh, little icon that looks like a text message tool. 
and I can send them a little message that says, great, great idea. And you can give your student responses. They can't respond back to you. So it's a little tool to either celebrate a student's thinking, or sometimes I use it to give my students a little bit of a nudge. So far, so good. You guys are being an awesome, uh, your group is being an amazing group of people. Let's go on to the next couple of screens here. So I'm going to stop the pacing here, and now I'm going to pace on screens five through seven. And you're going to see that um, things have changed a little bit here. Let me go full screen. Let me zoom in a little bit here. So now we're changing things up hey, a little Nick. bit. Nick, is the lesson still is the lesson still paused? There's a definite possibility of that. Okay. Thanks, Tim. No and problem. that is something I, I constantly do in my own classroom. That is not just a mistake I am doing tonight. It's a mistake I do in my classroom. It's very frequent that I am getting so engaged that I forget. I do it all the time. Yeah. All the time. And you know what? I love how the kids always remind you, like, hey, I want to keep learning. Unpause me. Unpause me. Yep. Thank you, Tim. So now we're changing things up a little bit. The left-hand side is no longer a sketch screen. There's no tools available to sketch. It says, how many orange tiles uh, should you buy for the border of the grass 10 by 10 swimming pool? Note that you can type an expression like two plus two below. So we're not explaining our thinking. We're trying to write a mathematical expression, not just the number. OK, listen, not just the number. So notice when we type like something like two plus two, which is the mathematical expression, Desmos is doing the calculation for us. OK, if we do something like uh, five times three, once again, the calculation is done. So on the next couple of screens, we actually don't want to. There's no sketch tool to use. OK, we're kicking it up a notch and we're trying to put a mathematical expression for this. And now that I think about it, I'm going to stop this for a second. And I'm going to actually let you peek back at those previous screens, three and four, because if you get stuck, that might be a really cool way. So spend the next couple of minutes on uh, screens five through seven, and then we'll debrief to see how those screens went for you. And Nick, I hope you don't mind, but I did drop in feedback for everyone who's here. So that way, some of y'all can, can all how the feedback it. works. You are yeah. the best, Kathy. I try, I try. <laughs> and although I haven't met Tim face to face, I have met Kathy face to face and I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing her face to face in the future. That's the one thing that Desmos does is it brings together teachers who wanna share and uh, help each other out and be really supportive. I love this community just for that alone. Once again, hopefully you're on screens five, six, and seven inputting mathematical expressions. Please, hopefully you're not putting numbers. Hopefully you're putting a mathematical expression. Either uh, Nick or Kathy, would you be willing to check the student uh, students' uh, comment here? I could leave it up Ooh, there. Oh, that's um, a really good question. Do you know why it won't let you enter that? Because it's not an expression, it's an equation. So Desmos will flag right. you, and you may see that if you look at the teacher uh, view, you might see this little yield. I always call it the yield sign, but it's like this little exclamation point. It will give you a warning if a student puts in an equation instead of an expression. There it is. Exactly, Mary Miss. An expression or the result. Otherwise, Desmos is going to Ooh, and you. I also know that that, that person is trying to a little prematurely here use variables where some of you who have taught math or are thinking about teaching math probably want to start using variables on these screens you're writing mathematical expressions using only numbers though using only numbers give me another minute or two to work on those screens Nick, what does the X mean and the check mark? Yeah, I was gonna give him a, a minute or two to Sorry. do that and hit the pause button. I know. We're on the same line. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't mean to You and I have been equally trained. <laughs> You're, it's like you're reading my little notes to the right of me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No worries. I'm, I'm gonna There's nothing to be sorry about. You're doing what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give everybody about 30 more seconds to work on up to screen seven.
Countdown from 15. 10. 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. I'm going to hit that pause button. So for tonight, when I hit that pause button, that means to all the participants that Hey, can you stop interacting as a student for a while? Hop over to the stream yard to see what so I have something important to show you. So Kathy was extremely giddy to talk about the first couple screens. We either saw little dots, which means the students interacted with the streams, or that screen two was just the student saw it. There wasn't even something to interact there. But now in screens five, six, and seven, we're responding mathematically and Desmos can actually grade that expression and say, hey, your expression is right. And that's the people who have check marks. That's the way of Desmos saying, hey, this student actually wrote an expression that is equivalent to the number of tiles. And there are a couple of X marks here. And that's Desmos way of saying, hey, they entered something here that is not equivalent uh, to what's going on there. So when there's something gradable, Desmos will try to grade that for you in their uh in the lessons that are pre-made to give you some feedback as a teacher so i would know that if i was running this activity whoever this student is that has two x's maybe they need me to sit down with them and work a little bit with them so i'm going to hop into teacher view for screen five and once again i'm going to look at all the different responses so I, I click on sample responses the answer should be 44 but the thing i notice is not everybody wrote 44 quite the same way. Hmm. It'd be really nice to compare all of these at the same time or a couple of these at the same time. So ooh, notice when I hover over this, I can check on this. I'm going to click on that. Ooh, they made a copy over there. Okay. 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 Um, it's a little bit different. I like that. Ooh. Ooh, so I just clicked on four responses that I liked and notice there's a little, they're all here together and it says present four snapshots. So look what happens when I click this button. Ooh, they're all together for me to present. So I'm now looking at multiple representations of the same idea. And now I can give this screen a little title, like how are they the same? How are they different? And now we can, as a class, discuss the different approaches to doing this. And we can highlight different students' thinking of, and how they all give us the right answer. And it's an interesting thing to think about is if we were to make a sketch that goes along with this, what do you think this student's sketch would look like as opposed to what does this student's sketch look like? And we can really get some interesting uh, comments. What I like to do is I like to say, how do you think this student who wrote 10 times four plus four, what was their way of thinking? And what somebody might say is, ooh, they think about the four corners and then there's four strips of 10 on the top, bottom, left and right. This is the idea of that we saw before another student do is that they probably thought about the 12 across the top, the 12 across the bottom and the 10 up on the side. So we can see there's different ways of thinking to get to the same answer. These responses that I'm giving are actually what I would ask students to do uh, in the classroom. So that's one way of creating what's called snapshots. And I'll show you a different way, but you can see that we're sort of increasing the level of knowledge uh, through the screens. The first screens three and four were sort of informal. Okay, we're getting a little bit more formal knowledge here of five, six, and seven with uh, just doing a little bit more mathematics. And now I'm gonna actually add on screens eight and nine. So now, and there was somebody who really wanted to do this already. So here's what happens. Now we're gonna remove some numbers and we're gonna bring in variables. So before we were looking at three by three pools or 10 by 10 pools. So now we're transitioning from, okay, let's take numbers away from those pools. And let's say we have an N by N pool, okay? Now it's gonna ask you to think about how many tiles and this answer will be a mathematical expression once again, but it should be a mathematical expression that includes that variable n, that's screen eight, okay? And on screen nine, after you input something on screen eight, you're actually gonna be able to test your response on screen nine. So I'm gonna give everybody a couple minutes to do screens eight and nine. Once again, please leave feedback about how you like 
interacting with these screens. Go! Screens eight and nine. Oop, there's the pause. Screen's eight and nine. Again, I'll give you about another minute to interact with screens eight and nine. About another 30 seconds to work on screens, eight and nine. Once again, if you see something cool that you like, drop it in on the chat. Talk about it, learn as a community. Count down from 10, five, four, three, two, and one. And I will hit the pause button to get your attention. And I'm going to hop in as a student. And I don't know if you did this, if you got the right answer off the start and went to screen nine, you might have missed some of the brilliance here. So let's say a student was interacting with this screen and they said, okay, it's an N by N pool. There's four sides and they inputted something like four N and you submit the answer and you go to the next screen. And now you say buy tiles. This is really interesting to me because this is Desmos telling the student they're not right, but it doesn't give them a check mark. It doesn't give them an X mark. It just says a visual like, huh, that didn't work. And you can see that your idea doesn't work for a bunch of pools. So this is a nice little way of promoting the productive struggle in mathematics. And this is a nice little way of saying, hey, maybe you want to go back to the previous screen and change your answer. And maybe the student wants to say, okay, maybe I have to add eight and now we'll go to the next screen and let's see if that works. So is it, is it four N plus eight? And oh man, now I have extra tiles. So Desmos is giving interpretive feedback to the students so they can see that what they're doing is not quite right. And maybe the answer is something like, ooh, somebody had something before where they multiplied four times, um, the number of side. Okay, let me see if something like this works. Ah, oh, that does work. Ha, that does work. And this is not the only expression that works. So here's their expression. So they're giving the students feedback, but in a way that promotes the learning. It's not just you're right and you're wrong. It's a little visual way to say, maybe you need some more, maybe you need some less. So it's really helping the students through this. I'm going to show you another way to create those uh, snapshots uh, in a little different way. So I'm going to go from summary view and I'm going to click on the first student's response. And 
oh, I sort of like that. So you can see now when I'm in the student responses, like this one, see how there's a little camera there? I can take a picture of that. It says snapshot capture, and I'll show you where it goes. So I'm going to use this button in the upper left-hand side here to scroll through some other students' work. Hey, that one looks a little bit different. Let me take a picture of that one. That's the same. It's sort of the same. A lot of people put the same. That's the same. I'm looking for answers that are different. Okay, that was sort of it. And... Let me see if I can grab one more. Oh, I like that one. That was sort of what I did. So I grabbed four students' responses by going one by one from the summary view using the down arrow to go through the students. And I took four pictures. So the dilemma is where did those pictures go? And now if I go to the snapshot, you can see the different views up here. It says snapshots four. I think that's where the pictures went. They're up here. So now in a little bit of a different way, I can grab these four responses and put them all on the same slide. I can use this uh, present album button to pop out the slide. And similar now, I can probably ask the same question. How are, excuse my typing. How are they the same slash different? And that's a great math math. There's a great conversation right there on that screen. That's a great conversation that I love to have with my students when I run this activity. A lot of cool stuff. I usually have students come up to, I have a smart board and they start drawing things on the board. And I really let my students drive the conversation about how these expressions might be the same or different. So it's a different way to use that snapshot tool there. Once again, the snapshot tool is just another way of amplifying student responses, showing that there's multiple techniques of accomplishing uh, the same task. Okay. We are almost done this activity. And now we're going to go take this. I'm going to remember to unpause. There we go. I'm going to uh, bring us, allow us to go to screen 10, which is a pretty formal here. And this is actually asking the students to make a pretty big connection here. So there's an error here. Here are Sam's shopping list for the tiles for five different families' pools. One of them is incorrect. Can you look at these and figure out which one uh, is incorrect. And this is really just understanding the structure of mathematics and really relying heavily on that previous uh, slide and how we wrote things there. So I'll give you a minute or two to think about that. And then we'll respond to that. Hey, Nick, would you be able to respond to this question as people are working? It's, uh, it says the activity is public. So can I copy it to my collections? Ooh, you can. I will show you um, after Kathy has, you can see I have some, there, we have some more cool slides here. When Kathy does these slides, we'll take a break around the hour mark. When we come back from the break, I'm going to do a tour of teacher.desmos.com. And the first spot I'm going to hop into is this pool border uh, problem, the specific one. Tim, you actually have the link to this whole big activity that we're doing today, you can feel free to drop that in the chat, but I will go specifically to the pool border problem a little bit later. Okay. So in an effort to save time, most people have responded. I'm gonna go into teacher view here and I can see that who mostly everybody who responded chose Cruz. Okay, and you can see that this is a multiple choice question. And one of the things you will see with the multiple choice question is the show correctness button. And when I click on that, I can see that everybody who responded was uh, correct. For the students that were struggling to this, what I like to do is I like to go back to those snapshots, okay, pop them out. And I really like to concentrate on this uh, snapshot right here, okay? This one where, hey, OK, we're doing four times some quantity, which means the amount of tiles that we buy is always going to be a multiple of four. OK, which means when we come to analyze this screen, uh, Cruz was the only number that is not a multiple of four. That one can't be right. One more uh, screen is on this activity. Uh, once again, if I go into the student view here on screen 11, it says in this activity, we progress from like expressions with just numbers to expressions with variables. And when is each kind of expression for ver uh, more valuable than the other ones? And this is just a really great expression because um, 
you can see that the design of this lesson is really to understand like the power of variables and the power of how you, we write expressions and how they can uh, let us solve a lot of problems. Uh, interesting thing is if we go into sample responses here, and I'll zoom in a little bit so this is a little bit bigger for you. Sample responses for students is variables are really effective when we have lots of pools to do this with, okay? Coming up with an expression with variables once and use it a lot. A lot of students are really hesitant when they start incorporating variables into mathematics. And this activity is a really powerful one that really helps us see like the power of variables and how it can help us solve problems. I am going to boom, 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 boom. turn off pacing for a second. I am going to stop pacing and bring everybody to screen 12 real quick so we can debrief this activity together real quick. So if everybody would please respond to this screen for me. So what we just did uh, was basically a full Desmos activity. Uh, we've looked at a full activity and just what did you notice about below? Mention something that you liked about the design of the activity or how the teacher dashboard helped facilitate the lesson. If everybody could do that, I'll share some of those responses and then I will kick it over to Kathy. So I'll give everybody a minute or so to respond to that prompt. Go. And I'm loving, loving, loving these responses. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for being an amazing audience. So I'll start reading some of these. I like the low floor, high ceiling. Not only this activity to me has a low floor, meaning easy entry point for students and a high ceiling, it actually goes pretty quick, but I really think it could be used anywhere from the middle school level to geometry. It's a lot of entry points too. I love the animations. What you'll, one of the things you'll notice about uh, Desmos is it has what I like to call delightful interactions would help you understand the power of mathematics. Pacing and pausing are really powerful tools. I like the ability to control how many screens they see. Yeah, pacing is a really important idea. Uh, when you're going through an activity, it gives you some control of where the students are. I like how you can pull different examples. Yeah, snapshot tool and just hopping into the student thinking really amplifies the student's voices in class. It really makes your class a more student-driven class than a teacher-driven class. The visual is showing not enough tiles. Yeah, that screen is really love it. Love the instant feedback. Awesome. I like to show anonymous answers and compare and contrast. Love it. That anonymized mo mode is really powerful to me. I basically use it the first month or two in my class to really just let students understand that it's a really safe learning environment. Then I yank it off and my students really just understand the rapport that we have in the classroom. I like the scaffolded nicely, love the pacing, all these amazing responses. Thank you so much for everybody that responded. All your good stuff. Love it, love it, love it. Oops, and Nick, I, I just want to add, um, I just saw along at the bottom of the screen, someone suggested using the My Favorite No routine with the, the snapshots, which is one of my favorite routines. Sometimes I'll use it the following day to follow up an activity to kind of reinforce the main topics I wanted to. And the My Favorite No routine is you pick a, a wrong answer, but a brilliantly wrong answer. Um, and students are able to comment on how would they change that answer? What was that student thinking? And the discussions that are created by those snapshots are just limitless. It's really um, a great way to engage with your class. Hey, Kathy, why don't you take over? <laughs> oh, thank you. Speaking of engaging with your class, um, one thing that Nick and I wanted to share with you all is some other kind of fun screens from various Desmos activities. Ooh. Um, so I'm going to take this over and I'm going to pause you all. Um, and I'm going to pace you in a moment. Let's see here. Let me get this back. Uh, here we go. Um, in a moment, I'm going to turn you loose on some other screens. But before I do, I just wanted to say that Desmos has a lot of created materials that you don't need to create on your own. They're there. You can use them tomorrow in your classroom. And I appreciate that as a teacher who's busy, who doesn't have time to reinvent the wheel and to have activities that have been through a vetted group of curriculum instructors, of brilliant educators. Um, 
I appreciate the availability of all these activities. So in the next couple of screens that I'm gonna give you, um, they aren't a singular lesson. They're bits and pieces from various Desmos lessons that are all available to you. Um, and what I'd like to do is give you some time to go through those screens. And then after the break, Nick is gonna give you a, a tour of Desmos. And then I'm gonna show you maybe how to build your own activity if you're interested. Just a real short overview on how to incorporate these screens into your lesson plans. So- um, hey, Kathy, can, I, can yeah. I just ask you quickly, would you be willing to make your screen a little bit bigger, please? Sh like this way Thank or you. which way? This way? Or okay. just like, just to make the font larger. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Thank you gotcha. so much. Gotcha, I'm so sorry. That's fine. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do, folks, is I'm going to move you in a moment over to this is the uh, this is a slide from the paint activity. And the paint activity is an introduction to ratios in which students get to mix their own paints and they get to see the dynamics maps occurring in front of them. Um, after that activity, I also have a slide from uh, one of my favorite activities. This is called Turtle Crossing. And in Turtle Crossing, I'm going to ask you to draw a graph that correlates the distance from the water of a turtle to the time it takes that turtle to cross the sand. When you have this opportunity, take chances and draw different things in the graph, and then you're going to be given um, a play button. Hit play and see what happens with that turtle. So I'm going to pace you now. I'm going to move you over here, and I'm going to unpause you. Take a couple minutes to play with these two slides. See if you can get correct answers. Try to get some wrong answers and see how Desmos responds to your wrong answers. And in the turtle activity, just to point out again, as Nick uh, showed you previously, there is an opportunity to use various drawing um, tools at the top of the page. Um, and there's even an eraser if you'd like to erase your graph after you draw it. Okay, and while you are working on these, I get to look at your brilliant answers. Oh, I'm seeing some really interesting graphs that y'all are drawing for this turtle. I wonder what happens when I draw a really squiggly graph. I wonder what happens when I draw multiple lines. At this point, most of my students are trying to break this. They'll draw all kinds of things and see what happens. And it's really interesting to see the interactions of the graph. Florence here drew a straight vertical line. Like, what is this turtle going to do? If I hit play, what happens when the turtle hits the vertical line? And if I want to have a cliffhanger in class, I can hit pause while I'm playing this. And we can talk about it as a group. No one's brave enough to do a loop-de-loop. -loop. There's always one student that always has a loop-de-loop -loop here. Oh, there we go. We've got a double line. What happens with the turtles on that double line when we draw a double line on the graph? Can you imagine how your students would react to this in class? For years, I was teaching lessons on uh, drawing uh, situations on graphs. And my students, while they, uh, while they enjoyed it, they really didn't think sometimes about what exactly their, their graph meant. So what if it's, they draw a circle? What happens if you draw a circle on this graph? What kind of turtles do you get there? Oh, goodness, let's see here. I love this one. Look at all these fun lines. Oh, wait a second. You have more than one turtle. What exactly does that mean in mathematics? I love it. So great. Keeping my eye on time, because I want to show you some really uh, incredible other slides. I'm going to add in a couple more slides for you. And the next two slides, are one of my favorite activities. And this is one of the activities that got me just, I don't wanna say addicted to using Desmos in my classroom, but really made me uh, recognize the, the, uh, the excitement that Desmos could create. Marble Slides is a, an activity in which you need students to collect stars. And I typically use this either um, with my linear equation unit or when I was teaching uh, Algebra 1, I used it also with uh, my parabola unit, my uh, quadratic equation unit. So what students will do is they go into the left side of the graph and they enter an equation. And the equation could be in slope intercept form. It doesn't have to. And then what you want to do is you want to see what happens when you change the numbers in the graph. So 
say I change my Y intercept to six and then I hit launch. Does that help me collect the stars? It didn't. So maybe I could go back and if I hit the back button, it'll let me change that. And what if I hit, oh goodness, let's go one fourth of a slope. Will that help me collect the, the stars? And if I hit launch, nope, not yet. So students can play around once they get the stars. Let's see here. I need a positive slope. One is too steep. Let's go ooh, one half. That might work for me. So if I hit launch and I collect the stars and my students get all excited and they start chanting and they get really competitive. Um, you'll notice that on slide 16, which a couple of you have already moved over to, there's another opportunity to collect some stars. And this one might be a little bit more interesting in your solution. So I have used this with algebra students, with algebra two students, um, even some of my seventh graders who are learning um, the basics of slope. We played around with this and they really enjoyed having these challenges. Okay, couple, let me add in one more. I know there's so many different slides I wanna show you all and uh, I only have so much time. I don't know if any of you all use the routine, which one doesn't belong. Um, my students love this routine. Here are four different options. And what I ask my students is to pick one option. And what I love about Desmos is when they pick that option, they have to explain their thinking. So that's another fun slide we can add in there. Let me see where y'all are. Nice. One of the things that I always uh, that I have always struggled with as a teacher is doing card sorts in my class with all those thousands of pieces of paper. And I always wind up with one group that's missing a card or some card that I find on the floor randomly at the end of the day. Well, in slide 18, Desmos has a card sort for you. And I love this card sort. Um, it's from a unit in seventh grade where students are comparing decimals, fractions, percents, and area models. And uh, Desmos prompts them, can you find all the matches to match? each decimal with its fraction percent and area model. So Desmos can do card sorts and you don't have to worry then about all those little pieces of paper that get lost, which is one of my pet peeves <laughs> when I used to use paper card sorts all the time. Oh, let's see, how am I doing on time? I've got a couple more that I wanna show you and I'm just gonna turn you loose on. The next three slides, I have a editable, editable fraction task asking students to quarter this shape. Um, and then I ask students often to please quarter this shape in a way that you don't think any other student would in this classroom. It's a great warm up for class. It's a great introduction to fractions. And it's also a great challenge for my students who need that little extra challenge because I ask them to get the most creative with this. Find a method that I've never seen before. And so many, so many of my students love that challenge. Desmos also has screens that have um, your, your hanger balance problems, which I love. Um, and a lot of my pre-algebra students appreciate these. Before we get into equations, I introduce um, them to the hangers, the hanger balances. Okay, and then the last but not least is one of my favorites. When I get into linear inequalities in Algebra 1, um, there is a screen where you can have students try to collect as many points as possible. You have discussions about, well, some points are blue and some points are red, and what does that mean? Um, so that's another fun kind of activity. And later on, when I had a chance to show you how to build an activity, I can show you where to find these remix screens that you can add to your own activities, or Desmos already has some of the activities built for you. So I am looking at our time, and I believe, and Nick, Correct me if I'm wrong. This is we're gonna give everyone a five minute break right about now. Uh yeah, we can get yeah, now's not a bad time. Okay, because just keeping an eye on time. Um, if everyone would like to take a five minute break, stretch your legs, get a drink of water. Um, I know it's hard. I don't know about you, but I struggle sitting for a couple hours. So do my students. So I like to use best practices and give folks a break. So cool. go ahead and take well, a five minute break. Fun. Lots of comments here. A lot of people showing uh, some Desmos love here. This is great. Um, so you guys do it. You guys are doing an awesome job. So um, it is 55 after the hour. So we'll pick right up here. Just so you do what you have to do. Go to the bathroom, get something to drink, whatever. 
come back here. We'll start maybe like 01 or something like that. So we'll hide everybody and everything, and uh, we'll be back soon. Very specific. Oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> oh, one. There you go. Don't go away. We'll be back.
and we are back and we are all unmuted except for Deidre. So, yeah. So, uh, Nick and Kathy, you're gonna, we're going to continue here at having some Desmos fun. Yeah. And this time yeah. yes. like, we're still, we are Kathy still live. Short. Cool. I'm not going right. to cut Kathy short this time. I apologize to Kathy for giving her less time than we planned. So, uh, the next part of the presentation is to see like what resources are available to teachers, uh, at for, for Desmos activity. So right now I am at teacher.desmos.com. I'm pretty sure you can find that yourself, but just to be safe, Tim will drop it in the chat there. And this is the main landing page for all the Desmos activities. Now I have something a little bit cool at the top of mind that I'll talk about a little bit. I have the rights to see uh, the Desmos curriculum. And for those of you that are hanging out tonight, I have a little bit of a, if you want to use it, thank you towards the end that we can talk about, but this is uh, basically the main landing page for all the Desmos activities. So the first thing I want to do, because some people asked about it, was like, hey, Nick, that pool borders problem, that was pretty cool. So how can I find that activity? Because the one Tim shared was the pool borders plus Kathy stuff. So if I type in pool. Hey, Nick, by the way, if I don't have a teachers.desmos.com um, account, can I sign in with my school email and get one? Yes. <laughs> Good point. Sorry. Lots of different <laughs> ways. And that's what I would recommend uh, doing is using your school address to create an account. Uh, it'll take a, a plethora of different email addresses to make an account. Yes, you do want to make an account so you can save all that awesome information about that. So I'm going to go to that pool borders problem. And I have some edited versions of this. This is tonight's one that has all this. Uh, this is the main one that everybody can see. I use this for PDs a lot. So I have a lot of different versions of this. So I'm going to hop into this and talk to you about what like a main landing page for an activity is. So you can see this is the main pool borders problem. Um, it's designed by Desmos. It's meant to run about 30 to 45 minutes. And you can see it's like tagged in a couple different categories. One of them is uh, distance learning, I believe, for seventh grade. The other one is the power of expressions. And I'll talk about uh, those ideas here. And you can see it's actually even converted uh, into Spanish and French and Hebrew. So there's, you know, if you have those type of students, uh, that's some uh, ideas about how to do it. Uh, so it's in a couple collections. Uh First thing I want to show you is like what resources are available to teachers to help like run the activity. So you'll see in the upper right hand side is something that says teacher guide. I'm going to click on that. And it brings you to a very cool printable PDF. You can see at the top of it, they almost want you to print it. And now what it does is it gives you some resources as a teacher. It gives you some like some checklists you should do probably before you run the activity. Um it tells you some ideas. Think about what screens to group together, uh, what screens to paste together. And that's what I did ahead of time. And here's a little screenshot of each of the screens. And then it has like a screen by screen. Uh, on the right hand side here is the text the students will see. Here's the picture. And you can write little notes to yourself too. In addition to that, those little buttons on the bottom left hand side that have teacher move and sample responses, they're all here. So it's a really cool way of basically prepping your lesson and thinking about how you're going to run this activity with your students. So it's a nice little teacher tool for the pre-planning stage of the lesson. And Nick, what I usually do, because I don't have the space to carry multiple pages with me, with me while I'm teaching, I'll just print off the, the page that has all the previews of the slides and I'll write myself notes like, hey, pace here, pause here. Uh, this is a key question slide, make sure you ask the following questions of the students. And that way I have a singular page in my hand after I've read the whole teacher guide that I can use while I'm in class. Yeah, I do something similar. I, cause I like to keep it as small as possible. Yeah. The pages would be a lot for me. And I, I used to do that earlier in my career. So now usually I just have a little post-it note uh, that I keep next to me about what screens get pasted together and I have a little star next to certain screens that I want to use the snapshot tool. So it's very similar to what Kathy's doing, but this is a great little screen to print out here. I think this is what Kathy was talking about. Exactly. Uh, now, 
One of the things on that checklist that you should do before the activity is experience the activity as a teacher. Now, if I want to assign this to my classes, that's on this page, this green assign button. There's a drop down menu. And what I did for tonight is what's assign a single session code. And that's the idea of you make a code for just a group of things. One of the things I recommend, and we just because our time restraints, we can't do it, is there's something where you can set up classes in Desmos. And we're going to give you some uh, continuing learning materials and places to keep looking. I would seriously consider setting up classes. Once you give your class one of those six session, uh, six digit codes, you basically can push out activities to them. You can link it to your Google Classroom and all this. But if you as a teacher just want to experience the lesson as a student, you don't have to assign anything. That's what this student preview button is for. This throws you right into the activity as a student without being able to create a code. So this is one of those things in the pre-planning stage that you really want to do before you assign these lessons uh, to your students. You can just cruise through it. Once again, we have the teacher moves, the sample responses are built in this, just like you would see in a Desmos activity. And can I just add there, Nick, um, my school uses Google Classroom as our LMS, and it's really easy to link my Desmos Classroom to my Google Classroom. And Tim just posted that. Um, and it just makes it one less step for my students. It's really nice to have that connection. Awesome. Thanks for hopping in. Uh, let's go back to the main landing page. Now, Desmos makes things really easy. You don't have to retype teacher.desmos.com. In the upper left-hand corner where it says Desmos Classroom, yeah, I know I've been abusing it. It's a hard transition to me. But technically, when you're in a Desmos activity now, you're technically in Desmos Classroom. So if you click on that Desmos Classroom in the upper left, that's always going to throw you back to the main landing uh, page here. So let's see what other things we have available to them. Let's go into the uh, featured collection. So we got the home button, uh, most popular. They're just going to be the most popular. Let's hop into these featured collections. So what Desmos has done is they have 24 of these collections where they've thrown a bunch of activities together that can be grouped together, whether you're in high school teaching about conics, uh, distance learning, algebra, calculus and all that stuff down to grade six. Okay. Grade seven. Okay. Distance learning grade eight. And there's even elementary ones. Let's hop on. That's most has elementary activities. Sure. It does. It has some pre-built ones uh, for you. There's stuff about adding whole numbers, adding integers, polygraphs. We just don't have time, but polygraphs are so fun. They're like the math Desmos version of that kid's game, Guess Who, where students have to pick an image and you have to ask questions about. There's time tasks. There's a bunch of polygraphs. So Desmos really has collections for everyone, for every teacher at every uh, grade level. Um, what I always like to keep an eye on is, and this is one of my favorites, is always going down there. Where did I? There's middle school statistics modeling recent, ooh, recently released. Because every time Desmos makes an activity, they make it like better than the previous one. So I'm always ducking in here to see what cool activities Desmos has released to the public. And these are all free public activities. Uh, there's a paint one flat. All these are really amazing. It's about tessellations, the scaling machine. So these are their most recent released activities that go out to the public. Uh, they're really, really cool. Once again, going to hop back to the main page and talk about other things. Under this, this idea of it is a feature collection, but it's on the main landing page because there's a lot to do in it, is the idea of these starter screens. I'm going to click on this and it's a lot of things. So screens for checking in, if I click here, uh, that first screen where we dr drug the dot to how we feel, that's right there. I think, Kathy, you're going to talk about copying and pasting, right? Exactly. So I'm, I'm going to help you build. Yeah. So when Kathy does building in a little bit, she's going to tell you how like you can grab a screen you like from here and put it into your own activity. So these are a lot of like SEL and just little check-in screens with your students. Really cool ideas. Um, there's also screens for checking up for understanding. There are screens that would go at an end of the activity just to see how the lesson went for the day for the students. Uh, Kathy mentioned that that one little cross button was from editable fraction tasks. A lot of great options there. So that's definitely something at the uh, elementary school level or early middle school level. Popular screen mixes. Oh, these are 
bunch of really cool ones. So the, there's uh, linear inequalities. There's one about coin capture. There's a land the plane. There's a slalom one. There's the hangers that Kathy talked about. There's really a bunch of great screens that are really good to uh, just fun, great interactions available. Uh, this whiteboard one is a really cool way to basically like give students a digital whiteboard. And it's a really cool way of like asking your students to, you could grab like the graph whiteboard one and I'll literally just keep on over and over again, give my students uh, verbal prompts on this one screen and say, hey, sketch a line that's increasing, sketch a line that's decreasing, sketch a line that's vertical. And as they do each one, they'll just say, you know, if I said increasing, they do something like this. I go into the teacher view and overlay and check to see it's all good. And the students clear it and go to the next one. Really cool way of like a digital whiteboard with a lot of different, uh, here's isometric. There's a lot of cool things. Desmos is really taking care uh, of their teachers, trying to make things as easy as it uh, can be for them. Uh, classroom data collection, a lot of uh, different grade levels have standards in them about data collection and random generators are pretty cool too. So we can something like roll four dice and you get to roll the dice and see their responses. So that's also a really awesome and cool thing. And Kathy, once again, is going to teach you how to, uh, if you like some of those screens, copy them and bring them into your own custom activities. Now, there are a bunch of activities on teacher.desmos.com, but it's not like every possible activity that's out there. There's a lot of teachers out in the wild who are creating Desmos activities that maybe if you're not ready to build your own yet, but you're ready to like sort of start looking for them, you can do so. I'm going to go into Google and I'm going to do something like teacher.desmos. And you can see dot com and look at fractions. And you can see that once again, do a Google search. I recommend starting with teacher.desmos.com and the topic you're looking for. And you can find stuff. And this one, here's Dr. Milo, who, who I actually know, who teaches at Rowan University. He actually collected 51 different Desmos activities and put them in a big collection. So if you're teaching about fractions, Dr. Milo has like hooked you up. And Jen, she's a Desmos fellow, created that activity. Th that's a Desmos created one. Hey, Kendra, she's a Desmos fellow. She created that one. Uh, Ke Kendra, so there's a bunch of activities that you can scroll, uh, scroll through. Hey, Michael, he's on the staff at Desmos. Um, a lot Nick, of great... Can I just interrupt a sec? I'm sorry. So what's the difference between the ones I find directly on teacher.desmos and the ones I find through Google? So so the one on teacher.desmos.com are only two types of activities that I consider. And Kathy, you can give some input into this. One is activities that are created by Desmos themselves, or two activities that Desmos saw other people create that they put the nice finishing touches on. So they've been vetted by the Desmos team and put on there. That doesn't mean they're the only ones, but if you don't find my first check is I always go to, uh, teacher.desmos.com, use those. You can use their search tool up here to find certain topics. If that doesn't work, my second option is to do a Google search. And the nice thing about the Google search, which I'm gonna show you in a second, is you may find someone else's activity that you love, but it's not exactly for you. I'm gonna show you how to edit an activity in a couple of minutes so that you can take someone else's activity and make it your own. Kathy, how about now? Do you wanna start doing that now? What an awesome segue. I'm sorry I jumped in. <laughs> <laughs> Teamwork, boom. No, it's awesome. Boom, you know we're we are right, Kathy. Go. It's all you. Uh, so um, what I'd like to do is show you all a couple of different ways of going about either editing or creating a Desmos activity. Um, and one way of going about this, the first way I should say, is going into Desmos and finding an activity that Desmos has created. So I'm just going to go, ooh, here is a pizza maker activity. I love this activity. I've used it with my sixth graders. Um, Sorry it's, to interrupt, Kathy, but could you make your screen? Oh, no, I'm sorry. You just said thank I you. Gotcha. It was hard yeah, to see. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> um, so the Pizza Maker activity is a, a free activity that's already created by the folks at Desmos. And if I wanted to run it from here, I could. I could assign it to my class and whatnot. And if I look, there are uh, various warm-up screens and activities. But what if I want to add in one of those SEL questions? I want to check in my, on my students after a long weekend and see how they're feeling or... 
um, I want to just give them a silly prompt. In any Desmos activity, there you'll see these three little dots in the top right-hand corner. If I click there and click Copy and Edit, it's going to put me into my Desmos Builder. And if you notice here in the Builder, and I'm trying to make it big enough here on the screen, um, I have the name of the activity in the top left-hand corner. It says Copy of. Um, I have the ability to look at the link and edit the activity details. And then I can see all the screens that are already built by the folks at Desmos. Well, Nick just showed you that there's a whole collection of SEL and checking uh, questions. So I'm going to, on another window, hop back over to teacher.desmos.com. And I'm going to click on starter screens. And what I love is all of these screens are already built. I'm just going to borrow them. So let's see here. Say I want to put something in at the beginning. I'm going to click on screens for checking in. And I can look down here at the previews. Oh, I love this is one of my favorites, this little robot. Come on, little robot. Let's reload that. There we go. There's my robot. So how are you feeling today? Um, and students can take um, the slider and move it back and forth and they can tell me they're feeling great or not so great. And then they can say more if, they'd, if I'd like. In the top left-hand corner of the screen, it says student screen preview and there's this little icon next to it. And as soon as I hover over it, it says copy the screen. And it gives me two options here. I can either just click that icon and now it's copied or I can also use command C. So now that it's copied, I'm gonna click back over to my original activity and I'm just gonna hit command V. Now, wait a second, it put it in the second slide. That's not exactly where I want it because I wanna check in with them before I actually start the full activity. So all I do is I click and hold on that slide and drag it to the left and now my check-in slide is there. I have it ready for me. Um, if I wanna go back in and rename this, I can say um, pizza maker with a robot check-in and now it's ready for me. So let's see here, I'm gonna save this. And when I want to find this again, I'm going to hit publish, which is in the top right hand corner. And now when I go back to teacher.desmos.com, there's an option on the left hand side that says custom activities. If I click there, here is my pizza maker with robot check in ready to use with my classes. So one more time, you can copy and edit any of these Desmos activities and add in your own slides. Um, you do so by Clicking on the activity, oh, let's pick a good activity. Let's go back here, most popular, let's pick a popular one. Oh, getting to know you, this is one of my favorite activities that I'm planning on using next week with my students to introduce them to Desmos. What if in the getting to know each other activity, I want to have something at the end of the activity to see how they felt about their first day in sixth grade at my school. So I'm gonna one more time, let me just show you this. You're gonna go up to the top and these three little buttons, I'm gonna click here, copy and edit. And then I'm going to go back over to teacher.desmos.com. I'm not going to use my robot this time. Let's see here. I'm going to do, let's see here. Uh, oh, goodness. Let's find something fun that I like. Um, I'm going to put in, let's check in for understanding. Uh, lesson wrap up. Uh, how well did you understand math today? How did you feel about math today? I can copy. I can click on this little icon at the top or I can command C and I'm going to go back to my activity. I'm going to hit command V and it pops in here at the end of my activity. Okay. So that's one thing that I often do. Teachers are busy. I don't have time to write full lessons. And if the lesson's already created by Desmos, I can just take a couple minutes and edit it and make it something that I can use with my, in my classroom for my students. Okay. So what if you're like, yeah, I want to do a little bit more. I want to do what Nick was saying, where he said that he puts in multiple screens so kids can graph increasing and decreasing graphs or things to that kind of idea. You can also start off with a blank slate. And to start off with a blank slate, you're going to go on the left-hand side here where it says custom activities, and you're going to click there. And it, I have a lot of custom activities in here. <laughs> I've been playing a lot. Um, in custom activities, at the top of the screen, it says create a new activity at the top. You'll click there. And what I love about Desmos is it's really user friendly. Like, what do I want to do? I want to create a new activity. So that's where I click. Name my new activity. Um, let's call it ICTM. And I have an option. I can either create an activity with a link that I can share with my colleagues, share with my friends 
or I can create an activity that's private and no one else can see it but me and I can use it in my classroom. You can have either option. Activity description, um, sample, lesson. Okay, sometimes when I borrow um, screens from other folks, I will hyperlink their activities here in this activity description. Or if I have a paper supplement that goes along with my lesson, I often hyperlink it here. So that way I remember and keep organized with all my different documents because as teachers, we have quite a few things to keep organized. Um, if you ever get stuck, if you open up a new activity, there is a hyperlink here that helps you learn more about building activities and takes you into a Desmos help page, which I love because Sometimes you just need, you get stuck on something and you're like, well, how did they do that again last night? What were Nick and Kathy talking about? You can find it right here. So I'm gonna go back to my activity and it bumps me out of there. So I'm gonna create a new activity, ICTM uh, lesson, uh, a sample lesson, and I'm gonna create a new activity. This can be public. It's, it's not gonna be anything that anyone's gonna really wanna borrow or not, but it's gonna be something exciting for me. So here is Desmos's building page. And you're gonna notice that in front of you is blank. And it says, choose an item on the left to add to the screen. Along the top of the page, you're gonna notice that I'm gonna have a slide preview, okay? And once I start building slides, I'll be able to see them at the top of my screen. Um, there's a plus button if you wanna add in a new slide. And if you don't want that slide, you can always just hit the X and it gets rid of it. One thing I like to take, tell folks is, play with this, take an opportunity, make mistakes with it. You really can't break a lesson in Desmos. Um, so, sorry. Uh, so take the time when you have time this weekend or if you're at school and you have time during your prep, play around with this. There's so many great options. And the worst thing you can do is make something that doesn't work for you and you go back and rebuild it later on. Um, so in Desmos, we have different components. And on the left-hand screen, here are all of our components. We can do a note component, text, math input, multiple choice check boxes, all these different components. Unfortunately, I don't have enough time tonight to show you every single one. But once again, I invite you to come back and play with them. The other thing you can do is you can also build your own teacher tips. Those um, sample responses that Nick showed you on the bottom of the screen, uh, you can actually input your own teacher tips into these activities. If you're interested in this and want more information after tonight, we do have links to other webinars on building. But let me just show you a couple of really cool, fun, and exciting things. Um, on the left-hand side, you're going to notice that these top 12 components um, give you different options here. And if I click on them, they can pop up on the screen, and I can always delete them if I choose not to use those. But all those top 12 components are not full screen. They're part of the screen. They won't show up. Um, like if I click this graph here, it shows up on part of the screen and then I could actually put a note with it, okay? Um, and they share the screen together on my slide. There's also options that are full screen. So on the bottom down here, there's a graphing calculator, the marble slides, which I quickly introduced to you earlier, card sorts, a polygraph, which I wish we had time for because it's one of my students' favorite activities, and a poly pad, and this is a new thing. I don't know if y'all had a chance to sit in Matha Garden's uh, poly pad webinar the other night, but poly pad is now integrated in Desmos. And let me just click on it and show you what happens. If I click here, I can see I have a poly pad screen in front of me, and I have options to all of these incredible manipulatives. Um, Thinking about my sixth graders, we're gonna be talking at the beginning of the year about fractions. So I could set things up like a fraction bar on the screen. I could have them build different um, fractions out of different fraction bars. Um, and if I wanna set it up when I'm building it, if it's on the screen here and I hit preview, it's gonna be on the screen when my students start working. So we have these incredible options. Um, and. I haven't even had a chance to play with all of the different aspects of Polypad. I need to take the time to do that. Um, other types of screens that you might want to include in your activities. If I hit the plus sign, um, maybe I want to create an ordered list of things. Um, I'm going to be talking about integers this year with both my sixth and seventh graders. So what if I ask them to put the following integers in order from least to greatest? And the order uh, the from is going to be least, and we're going to take them to greatest. 
And what if I put in a couple of numbers here, like negative one, 10, oh goodness, negative 1,200. And if I hit preview, look what happens. It puts them hey, in. Kathy, could you, could you enlarge the screen again, please? That perfect. There you go, sorry about that. If I hit, um, sorry, I'm used to Zoom and <laughs> aspect ratios, I'm sorry about that. If I hit uh, preview, I now have this opportunity to have these different numbers and my students can reorder these. And I can put them in least to greatest order on the screen, which is such a great idea, especially when I know I get into fractions and decimals and I want students to compare them. I can create a real quick activity where they can order the different numbers. Um, other fun things that they can create, um, a sketch. What if I decide, oh, I won't put it on that one. Let's do this. I'm going to make it a new screen, a sketch. One of my favorite prompts for warm-ups for kids is draw an animal or draw a picture that describes math as an animal. And it's silly and it's funny, but sixth graders are silly and funny. If I preview this, my students can now draw me a picture. And I can create my own, please don't judge the drawing. <laughs> but uh, my students can draw me a picture if they thought about math as an animal. It's a great prompt. It's a great way to start uh, school on a Monday morning, getting them to kind of be silly, but also talking about math and how it relates to other aspects of the world. So what if I wanted to create a graphing slide? Um, you have opportunities. If I hit the first graph on the top over here on the left, on the top part of the screen, I can create a graph. And if I click edit graph, I can throw a graph in there. Oh, let's do y equals x minus one. And if I go back over here and hit done, and then I hit preview, there's my graph. So what can I ask students about this? Well, maybe I want to ask students, what is the slope of this line? But wait a second, if I only put the graph there, where are they going to put, input their answer? Well, the nice thing about Desmos is it's just another button. I can just input, I can click on math input on the left-hand side, and I can click here, and now I have my graph, and if I hit preview, they have a little uh, input area here where students can tell me what the slope of the line is. The slope of this line is one, and they can submit that to me in class. So we have these options um, to uh, build things in Desmos. Let's see, what else do you wanna build? Let's build, Nick, what are one of your favorite things? Oh, you had mentioned the um, drawing slides, correct? Hmm? You had mentioned those graphs where you like your students to draw. So if we go to teacher.desmos.com, we can actually find all those whiteboards, right? Yes. So one of my big ones is to just grab the coordinate plane one oh, okay. and or you could actually, Kathy, why don't you show them how you can make the background a coordinate plane instead of copying and pasting. OK, so what if we did this with the draw component? Let's do that. Yeah, just, Here, here's my just, coordinate plane. And then what I can do is I actually can create it with a sketch component in it. And I did that by clicking the top three dots up here on the right-hand side. And I clicked it and it gave me an option for sketch. So now I have an option. I can give students the option of using pencils or lines, math or text. And if I now preview this, let me get rid of my question because now my question's irrelevant, isn't it? If I preview this, now my students just have a blank screen that they can write on. Like Nick was saying, draw an increasing graph. So they can draw their increasing graph, draw a decreasing graph, and so on and so forth. So that's another option. So what I'm going to ask you all, take a moment and go into teacher.desmos.com and see if you can create something. Either find an activity that's already built and add your own slide into it, or create something from a blank slate. Take a minute and try that. So one more time, if you go into your activities, you can edit them. You just pick any activity. You go to the top screen and click on the three dots. And you can hit 
copy and edit. Or you can try to, I'm going to put Kathy and I on the spot because I'm ready to go too. If you want to challenge us to build something, uh, feel mm -hmm. free to be like, hey, Oh no. Hey Nick. <laughs> oh, you see, I love this. I like being challenged. We might. Oh, you certain, want a challenge? No. <laughs> not from you, Tim. Oh, come on. <laughs> Somebody mute yeah. Tim. Tim's got the mute button. Um, there, uh, but there's really, there's a lot of easy uh, builds. So take a couple minutes. Um, I'm ready to go. If you want to challenge us, uh, feel free. Oh, goodness. The other if thing I free. also like using, um, the geometry tools, having students create uh, geometry constructions in Desmos. Um, the card sorts. Oh, do you build your own card sorts, Nick? Do you like building your card sorts? Um, sometimes I do. Yeah. So one of my favorite builds for card sorts as an algebra one teacher is to, uh, you know, if I'm doing, uh, parabolas and quadratics is to have a card with an equation, have a card mm -hmm. with how that's a visual, uh, using words to say how that's, uh, visual transformation and then the actual graph. I love it. So if I click on card sort, look what happens on my left hand side here. Um, so I have a choice. I can either go math or text card, an image card, or a graph card. So what if I did a graph card and I wanted to type in y equals negative x? And what that does is it gives me a, a graph of that equation. If I hit done, I now have a graph card here on my screen that has that graph. And then what I can do also is I can pick the matching equation. I can type in a math text of Let's do here. Let's one thing I should point out, and I don't I know that you pointed it out on the graph, but also in a lot of the inputs, you have this option for math types, type in math. And if I click there, it allows me to type things like fractions, which for this graph, it doesn't have a fractional uh, slope. But what if I do something like one half? I have the option of typing one half with it looking a little bit more um, mathy. Is that a word? Mathy. Than it would yep. if it was not. <laughs> Um, so maybe I'm going to throw in another, let's throw in another card here that was for that graph, which is y equals negative x. Um, I'm going to throw in another graph card of, what was that? Why don't you do the, y equals... Yeah, do that one. And then why don't you do, put one as increasing and one as decreasing. Ooh. Put the words increasing and decreasing. You got it. Here we go, decreasing. And then if I preview this, and I'm gonna make this bigger. So there are all my cards. If I preview this, I can see my card sort. And there are all my cards in front of me, okay? What I love about Desmos is I can also set a uh, answer key. So Nick showed you earlier that some of the, the slides in Desmos will allow you to see on the teachers summary page, whether or not uh, the answer is correct or incorrect, well, you can do the same with the card sorts. So what if I go in here, I'm gonna create an answer key. And all I did there was I go back into the slide where I'm building. And on the left-hand side, it says answer key. And I click there. And now I wanna line up everything I have. So this, this is a decreasing graph. And I'm gonna click, kind of pull those two cards together. And you're gonna notice they're gonna kind of snap. Let me do that again. So as soon as I bring this one card next to the second card, they highlight, and then now I can release the card and they snap. I love this new animation. You can actually um, collapse your card stacks so, so you can look around the screen a little bit easier. Um, let's see here. I've got this graph with this, and that's an increasing graph. And then I need to zoom out on my page. And this other last card is hanging out there by itself. So I'm going to use those, and I'm going to snap those together. And now Desmos has an answer key that if I hit done on the top right hand side and I preview this activity so I'm going to preview on the right hand corner my students are going to see this they're going to see these slides they're once again randomized and if I go into this and correctly answer this here we go hey Kathy can I ask what does that x in the upper left corner mean 
Oh, that's such a really good question. So if I'm in a student preview and I want to go back to the builder, I just click the X in the top right-hand corner no, and it takes no, no, me no. out of- He was oh, talking the about the other, the one that's a right check mark now. That's where I was going, Tim. You beat me to it. Me I know. We're, I'm sorry. We all use Desmo so well. We've all pretended about it. So I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Uh, once I stack my cards, uh, if I click the top of this, it will tell me whether or not I'm correct or not, which I really appreciate. And um, you can see that on your teacher dashboard. What I also love is if I make this incorrect on purpose, let me pull these apart. And if I incorrectly put these together and I click my, on the top, like Tim said, this uh, show correctness. And what I love with Desmos is anytime you hover over a button, it gives you what that button's gonna do. So if I show correctness and I zoom back out, you're gonna notice that I have these orange warnings that these are incorrect for the student. And I'll see the same on my teacher dashboard, um, which I, I've i made quite a few card sorts, especially for my uh, seventh grade class. When we get into the different geometric figures, it's always a great check-in for them to um, see if they understand like naming of geometric figures or formulas or what have you. They always love a quick card sort. So uh, that's one of the other options. Uh, the one other thing I did wanna show you is in the original uh, lesson, we had you look at some of those marble slides and some of those other remix uh, pages. So I'm gonna go back over to teacher.desmos.com and in the starter screens uh, option, there's this popular screen remixes. And um, my Algebra One teachers, my Algebra Two teachers, you're gonna find your students love those uh, marble slides. So if I click on popular screen remixes, I can go in here and choose one of these. Let's actually, I'm gonna do a, the linear coin capture. Why not? That was a fun one. I'm gonna take this screen and I'm going to borrow it. So command C, I'm going to go back into my activity and I'm going to add another slide. I'm going to say command V and here's my linear coin capture. Well, what if I want to change around my coins? What if I don't like them there? I can by clicking on edit graph and now I have the option and Desmos shows me with instructions here on the sides how I can change around my graph to change the places where my coins are. So I can customize this for my class, which I love because my students, after I do these, the already created activities by Desmos, they want more. They ask me for more challenges. And it's um, fun to add these onto a lesson for those students who go a little bit faster. It gives them something else to do at the end of the lesson while some of their classmates are catching up. So there are those options that you can go ahead and edit. How am I doing on time? We're doing okay? Cool. If you, cool. If you want to tag me, tag me in, I got a couple real s simple builds I can show too. Okay, go ahead. Cool. So I'm going to take over to show you like how I, like when I started building activities, these are some really simple ones. Now the images that I'm going to use in these next two screens are ones that I have saved on my computer. Uh, and I basically got them. So the first one I'm going to do is a which one doesn't belong. I'm going to basically put the directions in the title. Now, which one doesn't belong is a really good way to have mathematical conversations going on in your classroom. So if you haven't investigated it, go Google which one doesn't belong ticked on images, and you'll see that they're always in a set of four. And basically the idea is to get students to uh, look at the four image, pick which one they think doesn't belong, then explain why. So since they're going to be picking, this is what's Basically, it's basically a multiple choice question. So I'm gonna go on the left-hand side here under components and I'm gonna choose multiple choice. Now, multiple choice can be a bunch of things. It can be word, pi, it can be math. If you type here, you can type in equations, y equals three, x plus one, all that good stuff. But one of the really cool things you can do is you can add an image. So I'm gonna hit the plus side and you can do graphs, but I'm gonna hit image here. And one thing I would do when add, this is one of my favorite routines to go over with families at either, we call it a curriculum night, but a back to school night, I'll often have this as the parents walk in or the adults walk in as kind of a prompt to show them one of the routines we use in class. All right, and you can see that I, <laughs> these are on my desktop because I do a lot of presentations. So here are the four images. So there's the first one and it's gonna upload that. And I go to then add another image and I'll pick which one doesn't belong to. And I, 
a third image and I do which one doesn't belong three and a, another image, which is which one doesn't belong four. So once again, I got these four images by going to Google, typed which one doesn't belong. And I'm a big fan of a snipping tool. I snip these four images from that. And now I have the option besides giving the students the four uh, visuals to pick from, one of the check marks is ask students to explain their answer. And I'm gonna go, heck yeah, I want that checked right here. And I also want students to show their classmates responses. So now I wanna sort of see how the students would see this. So I'll go up here to my preview button, like Kathy was modeling for us. And now this is a which one doesn't belong, okay? So what the students will do is they'll click on which one doesn't belong, OK, and then they have to explain their reasoning. So when you talk about the which one doesn't belong routine, here is usually what I do. A lot of the times my students are in groups of two or three. So the first thing I do is tell students and I might even uh, have this projected on my board and pause for a second is think for a minute. I don't let them instantaneously react. Think for a minute about which one of these doesn't belong. I'll unpause after they thought for a minute, have them click and respond. The next thing I do is say, hey, now have a conversation with the person sitting next to you about which one you chose and why, and hopefully they didn't. The next thing I do is say, hey, I'll pause it. We'll bring it back to a class activity. And I'll say, here's what I need now is I need a volunteer to explain why each one of these in a way does not belong. And that's a really cool way to do a which one doesn't belong routine. The build is super easy. I just put which one doesn't belong in the title, up, use the multiple choice component, upload the four images, let students make sure they can explain their answer and see student responses. Super and one easy. Just, and one thing to think about when you are checking off that show students responses, I don't use that in all of the builds because sometimes I don't want students to see the other students' responses because I feel like it limits their thought process or it's something I want to discuss as a class. So as you're building, think about whether or not do you want the students to see why their their neighbor might have chosen that. For this activity, definitely. But yeah. for other activities, sometimes you have to think about whether or not that's going to kind of stop the engagement in class and the discussion. An another super easy build that I want to show is if you're thinking about, Nick, how can I get into building and be really easy is uh, what do you notice and what do you wonder? So I'll just give this a title, notice and wonder. Okay, and what I wanna do is I wanna give students uh, a visual prompt and I'm gonna ask them, hey, what do you notice? What do you wonder? So I need to have the visual prompt and mm, I know this has ge a geometry aspect to it and I sort of want them if they want to, to sketch on it. So I'm actually gonna pick the sketch component and we, the options we have is for a blank background, uh, the editable graph, or a custom in it, image. Yes, I like custom image. And I had this notice and wonder, ready to go there. So that's the image I want the students to respond at. Next thing I want to do is give them the prompt. So you, when you want to give the typing that the students see, that's a note. And I'll say something like, observe the pic to the left. What do you notice? What do you wonder? One more thing now. Like if I go into preview, they see the image, they see the directions. I need to give them a spot to respond. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Ooh, text input. That's what this component is for. If you ever want students to, and it's not a multiple choice, it's just like an open-ended question like this, you give them a text response. And now, once again, like Kathy was talking about, you can see student responses or not. This time, just for funsies, I'll say no and preview. And this is basically a super easy build, is you give students a picture to notice and wonder about, um, give them their little directions, and just give them a spot to respond. Just something to point out. Um, when students are responding in this, a textbook, there's a couple options. Um, students can type mathy in this. Always look for that square root symbol as a way of bringing in math type and like Kathy modeled before, there's cool fractions and stuff like that. Oh, and can I just put one thing out? That other one, that other option there, that image, does ah. give students the options of uploading pictures or uploading work. So over the past couple of years, sometimes I'd have students who might be at home and they want to join in on the lesson. 
So they're able to upload their work. They could take a picture of, say it was a problem where they had to show multiple steps. They could take a picture of it on their computer and then upload it into an input here. And then you can see all of their work, which is really, um, it allowed some of my students to still feel connected even though they were at home at the time. So I really appreciated Desmos's option for that. And since I'm screen sharing now, it's probably something Kathy was going to do, but I'm going to do it. Make sure when you build an activity, something that's different than Google Slides that you sort of need to do is the last step when you're done building is hit that publish button. You hit the publish button and that's when it makes it like an official activity and will give it its own landing page. Now you can, you can even though it's a custom activity, there's still the idea of, hey, it, you can still do the teacher guide. Okay. And you can still preview and all that good stuff. Um, and just going back to the beginning where you had that option of either having a link or having it private. If it's private, it will not be searchable on Google. But if it's public, you can search it via Google. So um, and, just to let you know when you hit publish, that's the, the option. And I'm just going to point something out, Kathy, because I learned this the hard way. If you're going to make an assessment in Desmos, you really want to make it private because I had a student finish a quiz very quickly when we were digital a couple of years ago and I called him on it and he said, uh, Mr. Corley, I Google searched, you know, teacher dot whatever and my name and the like it was quiz 10B. He goes, and I found your activity and I had all the, like the answers built into it. I go, I appreciate your honesty. Thank you for telling me that. So. Well, and also really? if it's copyrighted material, I mean, if you're using a textbook and you're using parts of that textbook, it should be a private link. Please don't publish it because of copyright issues. Um, but then if you have an activity that you've created that you really want to share, make it public that if it doesn't have anything with that's copyrighted. And it's great when you hear back from folks um, that they've used your activities in class. Uh, here's a question. How many activities say 30 to 45 minutes, like a whole class? So I guess I can just pull out certain slides to show there are quicker activities so here's the thing and this is what i love about desmos some of these lessons will take a full class some won't and if you look at the teacher.desmos site um here nick can you pull up teacher.desmos when you're looking at the activities it will tell you how long if it's going to take two days it is a-okay to pause that class and go back into it on the second day you don't need to create a second activity just pause it. I pause it because my students are the Oops. students who are going to go home and they're going to finish it if I don't paste it out for them. Um, the other thing is, yes, there are quicker activities. Sometimes I'll just run a Desmos one or two slides as a warm up in class, or sometimes I might use it as a ticket out the door that they finish. Um, so it doesn't have to be a whole 30 to 45 minute class. Um, also polygraphs um, take maybe 10 to 15 minutes in class and they're an excellent way to ask students to or they make students want to learn academic language in math class so they can play this guess who game. Um, my students beg for polygraphs in my class. So, sorry. No, good. Um, just one thing I wanted to, like, we're talking about all the Desmos activities that are available for free. And just real quick, uh, Desmos gave me a little bit of a privilege here when they knew I, I was presenting, or Kathy and I were presenting to a big group of they actually have their own curriculum, which is basically like a digital textbook. It's really cool. I have, Kathy and I have the rights to see it and I've used it in my own classroom and it was really dynamic. Um, it's a blend of digital and math resources. It is paid, but I'm gonna tell you something cool about the paid aspect of it. Um, it's based on uh, I am math, which is amazing. Um, those delightful interactions are littered throughout the whole curriculum. I'm back in our activity right now on screen 22. So you can see this yourself. I'm projecting, but you can see this yourself. And some of this stuff is clickable, believe it or not. And I'm not going to spend too much time on it. And the results of the curriculum have been like really, really dynamic. Like teachers, green is before Desmos curriculum and blue is after. And you can see that like it's helping students learn. It's, it's really cool and uh, dynamic and an amazing tool and like enjoyment went up like huge time. Like I really enjoy- My enjoyed... students love it. My students, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. using the sixth grade curriculum. I used it last year and my students keep saying like, what are we gonna do more Desmos? And what I really appreciate about it, it's only about 80% technology and 20% paper. So it's not technology all the time. There are supplements that we use on paper. We use manipulatives, but um, the interactivity is uh, has made a difference in my students learning. 
And, and this is one of the biggest things and why I felt like I could take a second to talk about it is look at this. Teachers felt supported using the curriculum. With most textbooks, most teachers are under 50%. Look at this. It's over 90%. It's really an amazing thing. Um, if you are interested, there's plenty of links here to uh, learn more about it. And the cool thing about this is, and this is the only reason I took a couple minutes out of our presentation to do this. If you mention my name, and I bench, if you mention Kathy's name, it'll work too. They're actually going to give you a 10% discount off of the price for your whole school, not just you as a teacher, for the whole school. So if you're a supervisor out there or whatever, and you were thinking about um, the curriculum, you mentioned my name, you get 10% off. I can give you my address so you can send me a little bit of a gift. <laughs> but that's awesome. I really want to- Wait, how do I get part of that? <laughs> uh, you can use the Nick Corley discount, believe it or not, and hold Kurt Avail uh, accountable to that because he said it. <laughs> um, all right, but now as we talk about next steps, obviously in our about two hours together today, we didn't make you- Desmos guru, gurus, even myself, I'm still learning. I still like spending time with other math educators like Tim and Kathy and talk about using Desmos in the classroom. If you go uh, to this uh, link and it's hyperlinked here, once again, I'm on slide 25 of the activity. So you have all these links. If you go to help.desmos.com, there it's a link to a bunch of uh, there's free webinars that they offer constantly about different things. Um, like running activities, the graphing calculator, using the dashboard, introduction to uh, building activities, computation layer, which is, I'd hold off on that until you did a little bit of building on your own. So the computation then, layer is what a lot of people are really interested. It's learning how to program the in kind of the internal part of Desmos. Um, yeah, the, 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 the delightful yeah. interactions, as I like to call them. Yeah. Uh, and then there's previous webinars on there. And just in general, if you go to... Uh, help.desmos.com. It's a huge, uh, basically, search engine to help you learn about Desmos in uh, some more detail. Um, there is a new, uh, just they're sort of branching apart Desmos, which is basically the graphing calculator and the tools and the activity website. So you can follow De now Desmos Classroom on Twitter. Most of you are, might have already been following Desmos. Now follow Desmos Classroom. That's more insight into using the activity website. There is an educators page on the Facebook also. Which is incredible because it's educators sharing activities, asking folks for feedback on their activities. Um, I often see Tim on there sharing his incredible activities that he's created. Um, and just being really, people are very kind in offering what they've spent their time with. And uh, it allows me more time in my classroom when I can borrow other folks' activities. So. All right. So in our last couple minutes together, we got to like debrief our time together. So if you're in the activity, I threw you on page uh, 26 of this. If you're not in the activity, I guess you're going to use the chat or shout out. Um, did tonight, this time spent together with Kathy and I and the support of ICTM and Tim, uh, do you feel a little bit more prepared going into the school year? Like, yeah, like, I do. I feel a little bit better. Or no, you made it worse. Hopefully we didn't make it worse. And how do you feel about using Desmos? I assume if you're a newbie, you're not here, but like, yeah, I feel a little bit more comfortable and there's a little spot to respond. Once again, you can respond in uh, the chat too as things wind down. Now is also an excellent opportunity to uh, ask a question and Kathy and I can try to respond to that in the last couple of minutes here. Um, once again, just in case you're heading out, I'm way past my bedtime. I want to thank everyone for being uh, with us tonight. Time is one of our most valuable resources to see you show up tonight. Or if you're watching at a different time, just means you're passionate about being an educator, more specifically mathematics. And that's awesome. Okay. Thank you. And so I just want to say thank you because the past two years has been quite difficult as educators. And I really appreciate you all. Um, wanting to learn and expand your your knowledge and integrate those most into your classroom. So thank you. And we're getting some feedback already. Is that I didn't know about Desmos until two weeks ago, and now I'm excited to dabble in with it. That is awesome. I'm actually going to take off yeah. anonymize to see who wrote that uh, thing. Thank you, Chica. And I, I, 
And I just want to reiterate, if you have any questions that you think about later down the road, please feel free to tweet to us, um, reach out. I work with We'd Gina. love to help you she's out. She's awesome. Ah, oh, you're lucky. She's, she's <laughs> passionate. Like that. I am. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah. Kathy, I just want to see our feedback. Look, everything is on the positive side. We made a positive impact. That made staying up late tonight definitely worth it for me. You guys were awesome. Thank, Thank you so you much. Um, the whole Desmos community is amazing. Like I've used Desmos for a long time. I had a, a student. Oh, I think it's been, it was pre pandemic. So whenever that was, uh, she was an eighth grader who came up to the high school to take geometry and we were doing trig. And she was like, so how come if I do this on my calculator, like the cosine of 0.1 or something, I get one answer, but Desmos gives me a different answer. And GeoGebra gives me a little bit different answer. And I was like, I don't know. And she's like, how does the cat, like, how's Desmos calculate it? And I was like, I don't know, but I do know this. I've been at things where Eli was talking and he's always like, just tweet me. And so I like at Eli and then uh, asked the question and Eli like emailed me because he had my email address and he emailed me a whole bunch of information. I shared it with the student. Like, so I know everyone in the Desmos community, super awesome at sharing. And you guys were fantastic, super supportive. Thanks. Best way I to see learn. a really great question from, I see a really interesting question here from Grace. Um, Grace, when you pull up the Desmos activities, if you go into student preview, um, you can, do you want me to pull, or I don't know, if, there you go. If you go into student yeah, preview screen or screen. into any of the slides, if there is a numerical solution or one correct solution, it will show up along the bottom as a sample response. Um, it also shows up in the teacher guide if you look at each slide separately. Um, if there is a solution that has multiple responses, sometimes they'll give you a couple possible responses that students may give you. So it won't so be labeled as answers, it will be labeled as like sample response. So the, I'm in that pool borders problem, I'm on the main landing page and I click on student preview, which is how you should preview the activity. And the pages where there is a numeric answer, the bottom tabs, teacher move and sample responses, it's in the sample responses. And it's also, once again, just to see, once you're running the activity, if I hop back way to the beginning where we did this, this is when I'm actually like in the teacher dashboard deep into the activity, I can still see under sample responses, those answers. So Desmos has you covered on multiple layers of uh, if there is a definite answer where it's there. Once again, that's for all the activities that Desmos has created. If you create your own activity that's where in designing the screen uh if there's an answer you probably like uh kathy modeled you want to drop it in there yourself just as a reminder for when you use it and that way it will also show up in your teacher guide and you don't have to go back and we solve all the problems yourself it's all there for you you do need an account for the teacher dashboard so go ahead and sign up with your school account um and uh, once you sign up, you'll have access to all the previous or all the, the Desmos created activities. Cool. Okay. And looks like that that's a wrap. Cool. Yeah. So uh, awesome. thank you. Uh, yeah, we want to thank. Thank you so much, Kathy and Nick. You two did an awesome, fantastic job. And uh, thank you also to the Iowa Council of Teachers of Mathematics. Thanks, for dear. For sponsoring Josh. all of these thank you. webinars. Yes, thank you. Thank you so thank much you for much. for joining us tonight. Uh, all the you're going to make a playlist, right, Tim? You said for ICTM to drop on yep. our website, oh, iowamath.org, yeah. and you can look at any of you guys' YouTube channels, your Twitter feeds, your Facebook, the Desmos community for this broadcast, Tim Brzezinski's Facebook. It's everywhere. That's awesome. Cool. No, yeah. So thank you so much. I mean, like. Um, like I said, our, our hearts just help you empower you as teachers to empower your students to uh, love math and love learning math. So um, if you have uh, – like you can find Nick and Kathy on Twitter. Uh, we, all, we are all on Twitter, and Twitter is a great place for teachers to learn and grow. I know when I go on Twitter for a couple minutes a day, I'll see stuff. Ooh, I, could, I, I see an idea for doing this like later on in the year. I see this and that. I scroll through Twitter. I think everyone on this broadcast here can say they scroll through Twitter for a couple minutes a day. You pick and you learn up so much, so much more in two minutes than you would having your district pay for you to go to a huge conference, which you go to a few workshops. You may end up using less than 10% of what you actually learned at that conference. You know what I mean? Can I say that so Twitter like, has made me a better teacher? 
Can I can I say that? Like Twitter has made me a better teacher. They make me look like a rock star. Best professional development out there for math teachers. Totally, totally. So hopefully the ICTM, we could do something like this again, maybe mid year. We'll see what's going on. But we're all busy and stressed with starting school now. So um, thank you all for joining. Thank you again, and uh, we hope you have a great evening, great morning wherever you are, and we wish you and your students much success this year. And um, yeah, so long. Have a great year. Thank you, Tim. Thanks, Thanks, Kathy. Thanks, Nick. Thank you.